Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to see how to create a stunning quantum splash effect with 3ds Max and Phoenix. It's an effect that's not very complicated, but there are plenty of little parameters to know to really create the effect you want. And we'll explore that today. Of course, you can access all the files on Patreon with all the simulation, alambic file, lighting, material, render preset, etc. Or you can directly process the setup on game mode. Link in the description. Okay, let's start now. Okay, so now we are in 3ds Max and we'll now see how to create the quantum splash effect. Okay, so we will start by creating here a Phoenix Liquid Simulator. Like this. Oh, just one thing before. Don't forget to go to Customize, Unit Setup, and check that you are in centimeter here. Metric, centimeter, centimeter, perfect. It's very important to check that you are in the good unit setup because the scale and the unit setup will affect the look of your final simulation. Okay, so centimeter perfect. I cannot go back to my grid, to my simulator here. Go to the parameter and maybe increase a bit like 160, 160 and maybe 70 like this now what i want to do is to fill this box with the liquid so right click chaos phoenix properties and here i will select initial liquid fill okay i can now go back here in the parameter go to dynamics here and activate initial fill up with maybe a value of 15 i think okay i can now launch a simulation and you can see here your liquid simulator fill up with a liquid at 15%. Perfect. Okay. I will now go to preview here and activate show mesh. I don't need here to see the particle preview. Okay, so I have here the liquid created and now what I want to do is to create an interaction between maybe a drop a sphere with a liquid to create the quantum splash effect. So basically you can do it with a physical simulation like I've done in my previous tutorial but I will show you here another way. Go to the view, small sphere like this and go up, okay. I will now animate this sphere in maybe 5 frames so I activate here the auto key go to frame maybe seven i think and animate like this okay here i have my animation i can go to the graph editor new track view select here the two point and switch to linear okay so i can now go back to the perspective view and start the simulation Okay, so as you can see here, I have a simulation, but it's not yet the crown effect. So we will play with some parameter to change the look of the simulation. I will show you. So first thing to do is just to smooth a bit this simulation. So I will go here in rendering, go to mesh smoothing and increase the mesh smoothing to maybe small value like three. I don't like to use a too high value because it will affect too much the look of your simulation. So basically I stay with a value between one and five. And you can of course play with the liquid particle if you want, but for the moment it's good like this. Okay, so, okay, so I have here my first simulation and I will show you how to improve the final look. So what you can do to increase the crown effect is to go to dynamics and play with a lot of settings. So you have here the stepper frame and the time scale. Basically, I will play with this setup, time scale and stepper frame, and maybe a bit here with the surface tension. Okay, so first I can decrease the time scale and see what I have in the simulation. So I will launch. And you can see here more dramatic effect. Okay. You can also increase the stepper frame. Basically, the stepper frame will help to smooth the look of your animation. 
so if you have too much particle you can increase the step per frame but you have to keep in mind that the step per frame will also increase your time simulation okay so maybe a step per frame three time scale to 0 0.5 i think it's good and i will decrease to have more particle more voxels so i like to set a value between 0 0.5 0.8 and when I want to have a very very complicated simulation I go to 0.3 so for the test here I will stay I think in 0.6 so 0.6 and I can relaunch yeah it's already fantastic what I have to do to have a more visual feedback on the final look of my animation is to change the look here of the material. So I will go to the material editor, right click, go to materials, general, and add a PBR material, the metal here, metal rough. Change the base to black color. And I will apply this material to my simulation. Okay, like this. It's more beautiful like this. Okay, it's already a good simulation, but I will show you some more parameters you can play with. So, if you want to increase again the splash effect, what you can do is to play with the same scale. So you can increase to maybe a value of 3 and I will now relaunch. We'll just change the background here. Go to configure viewport, background, um, use environment background and change the color here. So 8 and switch the color to white. Okay, perfect like this. Okay, so as I said, I've improved the sense scale to a value of three and you can see here a more dramatic look. It's very cool. So you can play here with the sense scale. I will just now stop the simulation or you can go here, right click on your sphere, go to Chaos Phoenix property and change the motion velocity effect. So. I will show you, I cannot just decrease the voxel size for now, same in dynamics, just for the test, decrease to a step of frame to 1 and just relaunch with the velocity to 1, you will see, so it's very fast, you can see here the look, ok, very fast. And I will now go back here, as I said, in the Chaos Phoenix properties. Change the motion velocity effect to a value of 2. So I will double the value. And I can now relaunch. And you will see it will be very dramatic here. With a lot of dots here. A lot of particles. So as I said, you can play here with the motion velocity, with the step bar frame. I will just go back to a value maybe of 1.2. Go back to dynamics, maybe set the step bar frame to 2. And now we'll see a bit the surface tension. So I will just relaunch a simulation with this parameter with a strength to 0. And after I will increase the parameter to show you how it looks. So. I launch a simulation. And now if you want to create a more ink effect, a more paint effect, you can increase here. Basically the surface tension for the water is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. So like this or like this, but you can increase a bit if you want to create something like more paint, 0 0.3. I can now relaunch. And now, as you can see, you have a more dense effect. I can, if I want, increase the resolution a bit. 
OK, relaunch. And as you can see, we have less small particle, small sphere, and you have something more dense. You can again increase a bit, or if you want to create very big drops, what you can do is to go here again in Dynamics Surface Tension and play and increase the droplet formation. So basically, I play with a value of 0 0.5. Droplet radius to 3, maybe increase a bit the surface tension, 0.4, and let's see the result. I can increase, no, I will just stay like this, just with this change here, and relaunch. And you can see here, of course, the resolution is not good. You have to increase again the resolution to have something, I think, more interesting. But you can see that it starts to have very big drops and very cool air paint effect. You can see here too. You can see it. I will just relaunch the simulation with a better resolution and we will see what we have. Okay. So, as I said, um, go to grid. And for the voxel size, I will try 0 0.6 or maybe 5.5, okay. I think it's good like this. You can decrease a bit if you want the time scale to have something again more dramatic. And we will see what we have like this, okay. Okay, I think it's good with 25 frames. I will not stop the simulation. And you can see here, we have here more paint effect, beautiful drops and really smooth effect. Here. You can of course go back to the mesh mousse and increase a bit like this. And it's good. Very cool effect. If you want to create a slow motion, what you can do is just play with the input. So you have here, not in dynamics, but here in the input. Of course, you have to finish the simulation, not pause, but stop. And here you can play in the mode with the cache index, the loop, the linear. If you want to decrease the speed, maybe to 50%, you can just adjust the play speed to 0.5. Here. And of course, you will have here your slow motion. So not in 25 frame, but in 50 frame. It's very cool. Okay, I will just go back here to the play speed, set the value to one. If you want, and the last thing you can do if you want to create very random simulation is to play with the look of your object. So what I love to do is to increase a bit the number of segments, add a noise modifier, maybe five, 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 scale to maybe 20 mm, maybe less like this you can play with fractal if you want maybe not fractal something like this okay why not and of course i will just decrease a bit the voxel size to show you maybe a voxel size to 0 0.8 Go back to the dynamics here. Dynamics for the surface tension, I will set something like water, so maybe 0 0.5, no droplet formation, and relaunch to see the difference. So you can see here you have something very different, of course. The resolution is not good, but you have something very different because of the change of your object. Great.
Okay guys, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget to give me a thumb up if you like my work. You can find the complete project file on Patreon with all the simulation or purchase them on Gumroad. You can also follow me on Instagram or Beyond if you want. See you very soon for a new tutorial guys. Bye.